Gem star bars, I cut them above 50 Overheads when projecting the words, I'm so witty And a maniac on the track, I get silly And a champagne Chevy still peaking above 50 Stop pop squilly till labels is 10 milli Agree to my terms and now that they won't clip me Women say I'm cool as a fan, thanks really We fucking but- Hey yo, what's going down? I'm OD and this is Slump Sessions, the show that is the culture. This episode is brought to you by Fish Scale 84. Head over to fishscale84.com and Reneka App Builders. Reneka App Builders is the site that you go to where if you want apps, if you want a website, step your app game up, get your marketing right, and links will be in the description below. Head over to main.diabetes.org. Reneka App Builders is part of the Kiss a Pig Foundation fundraiser. Kiss a Pig fundraiser. Yes. Yes. Here we got Kiki the Pig. Shout out to Kiki the Pig. Hey. Links will be in the description below. If you want to donate, go over and donate. Do something right for the people. It's just a little bit of money. But it goes a long way. Today, we got... Something better in the studio. Shout out to something better. Hello, David. I'm happy to be here today at Slump Sessions. Hello. How are you doing? I'm very, very good. I'm very, very healthy. Living my best life, you know. You sound like Dracula. Ah, uh, man. I, you know, I, I only come out during the night, but I had to make a special occasion for this. That's why we got the the lights so dim right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I stay in my shadows. You know, I'm <laughs> bloody cut like incisions. <laughs> Some, something better but yes hey kiki the pig she's gonna be sitting here can i kiss it can i kiss the pig yes you can here we go see there support. we go support that shit My yes links will be in the description something better in the studio man yeah. glad to have you here glad to have you too man nice hey to you. good to see you man i've been digging into your music the past few days <laughs> yeah it's, it's a lot to process it is yeah, cause you you gotta you gotta pay attention. Yeah, yeah, you gotta dig into the to each line. But we'll get into that. Let's start it out, man. Well, who is something better? Oh man, uh, something better is a damn. How do I say it? I think something better is just a dude who's twenty three years old going through life trying to figure it out and just be himself as much as possible and just live his life trying to lead and be a better person every day that's a good that's a good explanation that's all i can describe it as just trying to be yourself that's it man that's i mean that's all you can be that's how you should be you shouldn't be faking the funk never that no that just gets annoying i'm not going Spend my life trying to be like someone else. That shit's exhausting. Or trying to be something you're not and put on a like a front for everybody. That's too much. MVP, man. MVP. What is that? Mass bearing prohibited. <laughs> None of that shit. <laughs> okay, man. So where are you from? I am from Houston, Texas. Uh, I've bounced around. I say Houston in general because I lived in Katy. Then I lived in Richmond. Then I lived in Sugar Land. Then I lived in Montrose. Went Dang. back to Richmond. Lived, visited my sister all the time over here. Also, I lived in Southwest Haley, and then I went back to Mont, but then I went back to Richmond. Damn! Yeah. So you just all over the Houston area? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why are you moving so much? <sighs> Trouble. <laughs> Trouble is expensive, and that shit. You know, I learned my lesson at like seventeen. That shit wasn't fun no more. No. Nah. Yeah. Trouble's it. no fun. That shit's not fun, man. That shit's expensive, and it's, it hurts people. You separate from people, family, and shit. You know, I had to rebuild all that. Yeah. But man, that's a lot of different places. Oh, and Waxahachie. Sorry. What is that? <laughs> I was living in a home at one point. Huh. In my life together. Waxahachie. Fu- yeah. I fucked up over there. You know, came back, wake up. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> well, you're a man of everywhere. Yeah, man. I'm a, a traveling man. All over the Houston area. So, how has, you know, kind of traveling that much and, you know, bouncing from place to place kind of grown you as a person? Uh, I got like a good sense of like who people are. You know, mm-hmm. I have a good taught me how to socialize better. Music teaches me how to socialize. I, f- I picked up new traits, different how like people bend to society and how they bend into their environment. So I'm able to adapt and be very resilient everywhere. So I think that's how it affected me. You know, I mean, if you're if you're gonna go through something like that, you might as well try to absorb as much knowledge and 
and soak up life as you can. Yeah, that shit was actually fun though. Sometimes <laughs> uh, uh, going from place to place. Yeah, it was fun meeting new people all the time. Yeah, I went to a school. I, it was the first time I had to wear uniforms, and I was not fucking with that shit. And then I had to realize it's just everyone's the same. Everyone's the same, and everyone's the same. Everybody has to wear the uniform. Everyone has to wear a uniform. That sucks. Literally everybody. Yeah. Well, what was the uniform like? Oh my god, like creased khakis and fucking polos. I was like, bro, this is trash, bro. I can't fuck with this shit. You gotta, you gotta figure out how to make it fresh. I still had like good grades, but I was like, man, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I can't. I don't. I had uniform like in junior high. I don't like that shit. It makes you feel like 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 a robot. Like yeah, you, you like, just Ugh. there's no individualism. You can't, you know. I don't got no peace of mind in this. You can't beat you. Suit. You can't be yourself. Hell no. Nah. That's the most important thing. If I can't be myself, I might as well not be here. I'm not special. <laughs> There's one me. You know what I'm saying? So how did you kind of like get into music and stuff? How did you grow up like in a musical house yes, or? I did. Okay. My pops is a musician. Uh, he teaches piano and also choir. He uh, is a licensed teacher as well. Everywhere universally, and nationally, teacher for teach music. Always. Watched my dad growing up. He plays for his church as well. So uh, he used to record tapes for the kids, mm. particularly, to bring into class. And he'd sit there all night and record the parts they're supposed to play. And he has like eight classes. It's a billion kids. You got to tape for each one. Like, wow. I was raised around different types of music, gospel, jazz, um, hip-hop. Like I really got from my sister. I got into that late. My first uh, CD was a Little Romeo tape. I had a Little Romeo tape. Which and one, though? What was the one that sampled the Michael Jackson shit? Was that <laughs> was that Ro- like I th- was it Game Time or is that Game Time? I don't remember, but I think I remember I had that that, that album too. And I had Little Bow Wow's uh, CD burned, which in the Be- Beware of Dog. Yeah, that one was amazing. Yeah, and I had a compilation tape of like a, a compilation CD that my brother in law made for me. Hey. <laughs> That was a good times, man. Oh, Chris was, Brown songs. <laughs> that was the good days. Hell yeah. So, like, gospel and stuff. Yeah, I grew up in a very uh, religious household. Oh. Uh, Partially why I don't, I can't deal with that shit anymore. <laughs> no, I, I feel that. I grew up the same way, you know, really religious house. And as soon as I can, you know, as soon as I was able to, I, was just, I didn't want to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. Super, you know, judgmental. Just and like, I can't, yeah. Like, you can't. You can't. Like, you gotta look this way, then you gotta be this way, then you gotta act this way, present this image. These people do this. I'm like, but you don't even know. Like, them people fuck up too. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You don't know how good those people are. You just think that they're good, but like, that's you know, how it is. I I had to get away from it. Yeah, it kind of like when I, as soon as I got away from it, I was at 18, 18. I was living in Covenant House in Montrose, and I was like, okay, I can't do this shit no more. Like. I was praying, shit just started got worse. I put my faith. I did everything I was supposed to do. I know everything about it. So I was just like, nothing changed until it I wasn't put, working. It wasn't working. Like I was just like, yo, my shit's getting worse. Like, like I'm praying and nothing's it's not helping. And I'm putting the work in. Like I'm taking buses, job searching every day, and going to school. So like it's just like I'm tired. Like this shit's no having no effect. But like, I'm gonna put all my faith in myself now. And mm. Changed everything. Yeah, that's how it is though. You know. So I mean. Growing up in a musical house and stuff, that must, you know, that, that that taught you a lot about being a musician. Yeah. Yeah, it taught me a lot. I had a lot of uh, soundscapes as a kid. Also, like, going to performances and operas and, like, yeah, j- uh, choreography and stuff like that and how stuff is supposed to work. I was very in tune with that, very so, involved. So why didn't you take up singing if your dad was a... Like a choir teacher and stuff. Why didn't you take up singing? I don't. Have, I didn't have the patience for it. Oh. I had a. I had very bad uh, attention span. I couldn't sit down and do anything. I, I would get something. I was very brilliant, but I could. You, you, once I get it, I, I'm out <laughs> doing something else. So it's kind of like um, I didn't at the time. I probably could do it now, but it wasn't. It wasn't the best thing, and I'm also not that close with my pops. So. Mm, okay. So you did get into like hip hop and stuff and rap from your sister. Yeah, I was listening. I, I, anytime I spent time with my sister, I, uh, that was my older sister, sister. My older sister, yeah. Okay. My sister Courtney. She's like one of my biggest supporters. Shout <laughs> out to Courtney. Love you, Court. Uh, <laughs> and uh, my brother-in-law as well. 
uh, they put me on to like I remember when C Murder released "Fuck Them Other Niggas." Yeah. I love that shit. <laughs> like <laughs> whenever you're young and you're you're getting into like the the rap and the hip hop, it's such like a like awakening experience. You're like, what the fuck is this exactly? Like what have I been missing? I got to watch the Ti Twenty Four videos come out. I'm sorry, I got to watch that shit. That's one of my favorite rappers of all time. Like, Ti? Yeah. Okay. I think he's. Brilliant. I don't think he gets enough credit for it. He's definitely shit, underrated. So. Yeah. And, you know, he did start the whole trap shit, so come on now. Also R and B. My uh, sister put me on a lot of uh R and B as well. Like I didn't know I was listening to Erica Badu and Lauren Hill until I got older. <laughs> oh. Well classics. Yeah. I just just love music, man. I've been yeah. Music for me has always been something that I've been able to go to. At any situation, stomach. Ooh. <laughs> I was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> in any situation, you could go to music and and it just instantly make me feel better. Yeah, man. It, uh, man. Music is life, man. Our body is an instrument. We have a heartbeat. You can compare that to BPM. Yeah. Our vocals are projections of how we feel. Like it, music evokes emotions. Words are everything. Words make up everything. You know. So I think music has to be here to keep the balance and maintain order i have a cool ass thing i was just thinking about just now like talking to you about music and how much it plays a part in people's lives is all the bullshit that people beef over all the time six different people in a room or 600 people different in a room one billion people different in a room could be fighting one day they go in this one room this one person who has an influence and uses their words and has a musical connection can link everyone together and everyone's at peace mm-hmm. think how much power that is and as soon as we fucking leave lunacy takes the fuck back over that's crazy right yeah so i mean you could be in a room with i mean you could even take it back to you know the the passing of nipsey hustle yeah man um you see all the the crips and the bloods and they're all they came together and a couple months ago yeah. they were they wouldn't have been that but one person brought them together mm-hmm. through music through being you know the person that he was and it could change a lot of things yeah man it changes everything you know music changes history it has it has and and you can see the progression of people and the progression of everything through music throughout the years and stuff mm-hmm crazy that nipsey shit man all right i'm gonna say it right now i knew who nipsey was Mm -hmm. one i did not listen to his music a lot i tried yeah but i did pay attention to what he did and what he stood for anytime i saw a post about i was like i respect this dude let me and then that shit happened yeah he i mean i was never the biggest nipsey fan i'm never gonna say i was Mm -hmm. his music was good i didn't listen to it all the time but I would I would see what he was doing in the community and I would see what he was going on and and I was always you know respecting like I could see that he's definitely changing shit. Yeah, man, he's trying to make an impact on this community and try to rebuild the community and not have someone come in there and fucking gentrify the shit. Yeah, and I'm even now. I mean, no diss to anybody. I'm still not the biggest Nipsey fan. But it, you understand. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's it, it, how it's always gonna be. You don't have to be a fan of everybody, but you can respect respect is universal you have no choice but to respect someone like that yeah you can't i mean you, you have to <laughs> yeah man it's like that's how you respect disrespect someone doing some positive shit you look like a joke <laughs> yeah <laughs> all those people on the news and shit that were joking and shit now fuck them that is foul fuck fox it was that fox i, th- I think was it was it like cnn or fox it was one of them but either one fuck both of them hey yo fuck that gerardo rivera motherfucker and fuck fox news and anyone who disrespects people like that yeah Show respect to the dead bro Period. And show respect to people while they're here. Fuck, yeah. Fuck Fox News. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Damn, so I'll probably fuck some shit up for y'all just now. No, it's okay. <laughs> I wouldn't want a Fox News sponsor anyways. Fuck Fox News. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't want a Fox News sponsor. Fuck that. No, no, no. So, but getting into music and stuff, you were, you know, what were some of your influences in the style that you have now? Woo. Okay. <laughs> Uh, First, I mean, I guess we can say your name something better. You said came from MF Doom. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So that story, the better part, the better part of my yeah. name. Yeah. All right. So, uh, first off, something better is me. Just like I said, it's me. I'm trying to do better every day. I want to be a better person. I want to be a better example. I want to be a better leader in myself. I want to be a better person. Now, the better, the way I spell it, uh, I love Joey Badass and Pro Era. 
Yeah, they influenced okay. my style a lot when I was in high school. Uh, my senior year, I just when I dive into something, I know everything. Yeah, whenever I dive mind. into something, it's like I just go off in the deep end. Yeah, and I don't even uh, just getting right into it, and I try to learn everything I can about it. And it's every day; it's a study, you know. Yeah, that's how I am. And so when I knew they like Doom, I was like, "Oh, y'all like Doom too? Oh, y'all are cool." <laughs> and then like I went into this shit, and now they has a on the uh, Rejects tape, the first Rejects tape. For 1999, he has a song called Oh Dear, parentheses, Better Days. That song, I was going through a trash-ass period in my life, and that song always made me feel good. So it was just one of those things that always, like we were saying, music at any time. Yep. And, it made uh, you feel better. Uh-huh. And better, see? Yeah. And then, like, uh, the, it's spelled Better Days, and it's produced by Doom. And I know Doom would do some shit like that. So that was really cool to listen for me. And that song stuck with me. So, and you know, you can't, it doesn't look cool to also third. It don't look cool to just base something better. Like yeah. stylize the shit and make it look. I mean, it, yeah, it's more stylized. See, whenever I, I first heard it, I was thinking like somebody saying like, oh, I'm looking for some better music. Well, here's something better. That's exactly what's the plan. So it was like a pun. Like yeah. it's a play on words. It's like anytime, like name a nigga better than better. Yeah. <laughs> Like, it's like, oh, you're looking for some better music? Well, here's something better. Exactly. That works. See, that's how I pick it. That's how I pictured it whenever I heard it. Yeah, man. Yeah. And then the something, you know, sum, like the sum of everything. Yeah. Like, I was like, all right, the sum of all my work is something better. Oh. So that was. Like, so your name has like a whole little story behind it. Yeah. yeah but yeah. so Joey Badass is one of your big influences in your style? The whole pro era camp, really, yeah. But mo like, I got put on the Steez and Joey. Okay. And from Joey, I went to CJ. And CJ's project, The Way I See It, I think that came out 2014, 2015. That's like one of my projects of all time. Huh. He wanted me to, he has a way of like bending words and putting stories together, even the way his track listing and visuals were done. It's just like aesthetics is, is fucking art. Oh, yeah. So you, saying. you know, you really like that East Coast shit, or is it just them? Uh, nah, it's uh, Big L. It's, uh, I like, I didn't really listen to much Biggie, but my first Biggie song I was obsessed with was Kicking the Door because I just think that's just raw. I like early M. Like, y'all can be mad at me, <laughs> but like, M, Slim Shady LP, and Back is my favorite. Well, those are the, that's whenever he was, you know, on his shit. Exactly. Royce is nice. Royce the I five. still think on the stretch and Bobito freestyle that they did for 11 minutes, like Royce got his ass. I could, y'all can argue with me all day. <laughs> Come on, man. And then I like uh, Royce a lot. Uh, Griselda influences me heavy, like Benny the Butcher. They're from Buffalo. I like uh, Detroit MCs, Clear Soul Forces. See, I, I just started getting into Benny. Benny's nice, man. Yeah. He was supposed to be on XL. That's, that's, what, that's the reason I started getting into him because I was looking to the, the list and I was like, okay, I don't know who this is. He sounds like a professional wrestler. I know, right? Yeah, if you're gonna <laughs> Benny the Butcher, it sounds like a professional wrestler. It sounds like you're gonna be coming out to, to do some WrestleMania shit. Facts. But he's nice. He's nice. I got a couple more. Uh, what else? Odd Future was early in me. Uh, yeah. Uh, Pastor yeah. Keith put me onto them. Odd Future was probably one of my favorite groups whenever I was in high school. That was like my junior, senior year yep. in high school. Yeah. So I mean, come on. Oh, you just got it, yeah. Isabella. <laughs> I had I had to I had to get the goblin on there. Sick. And then I got um uh J Dilla of course. Clear Soul Forces, Nolan and the Ninja. Clear Soul Eight Forces Where are they from? Detroit. Okay. Cuz I heard them and I've seen they were on your he was on your tape. He did my show too. I okay. did a show with them. Okay. And then I had seen that they came not too long ago, and I was going to get an interview with them. They told me to come out, and I got really busy, and I wasn't able to go. Oh, you missed out, bro. Yes. <laughs> you missed out. That show was sick. And, man, <laughs> yeah, I had, I've had. i seen them. I have them on Instagram, and they're dope. Yeah. Yeah. Yikes. But I, I missed out on that. I wasn't able to go to the to do the interview. Man. Sorry, but if y'all are ever in town again. Yo, it's worth it. Please come back and do the interview. It's sick. Chris, <laughs> do the interview, man. <laughs> have them do the interview <laughs> but yeah so i mean you have a lot of like really good influences i got more <laughs> it's even sometimes it's not even rap like who uh like i said erica badu i love on and on it's certain songs that hit me i got producer influences uh like i said i said dilla i said uh ninth wonder i love ninth wonder i think um uh primo of course dj premier 
He's from Houston. We claim Primo. We claim Primo. Uh, <laughs> I say, um, oh, I'm fucking forgetting. Oh, it's really important. It's Elijah Day from Clear Soul Forces, of course. Okay. This shit knocks. I used one of his beats recently, too. Oh. That's dope. Oh, Abstract Flanders. So he's he's on my project all the time. Uh, Pastor Keith is an influence of mine. Uh, bigger influences, I'd say. Uh, Kanye, of course, is as a I think I don't listen to enough Kanye to have an opinion. Like I did not like College Dropout, and the world will probably kill me for it. Yeah, but I'm about I, to end this interview right now. I'll <laughs> never I'll never say. That he is not one of the most skilled, talented, and perfectionist in this game. And what he did for this culture is amazing. Yeah, kind of is probably top ten for me. Maybe even top five. Just in production-wise. Just in, you know, what he has done and everything. He's, he's on his, you know, kind of weird shit right now. But I'm still gonna I'm still kind of a fan. Fuck that. It's actually not weird. Because if we really look at it, West Coast, he just revamping west coast sounds like cowbells and other shit well no like, like in that. like the personal type shit like oh. where he, yeah wow. but <laughs> i've always been somebody to separate the artist from the art that's not fair though is can we really have this you want to have this conversation we can the artist from the okay but like there's no art without the artist no okay <laughs> like, like i'm talking about the people who say they're gonna never listen to r kelly again because of the shit that he did I can't fuck with R. Kelly. Me personally, I can't. Or the people who say it will, um, the same way people say they can't fuck with like Michael Jackson because of the shit that he's done. Leave Michael alone, y'all. See, <laughs> that's where are like some people who are really like homophobic and shit and say they they can't listen to Frank Ocean anymore. I I, I separate that who stuff. The fu- All right, listen. I've right. I've heard that. That's fucked up. Number that one is. is Frank Ocean. It's Frank fucking Ocean, man. Come on now. And also, who? It, I don't give a fuck if you've never heard Frank Ocean. I guarantee if you go and just take one Frank Ocean song, uh, you're going to like it. Yeah. How you not like Frank Ocean? He sings. That's, that's really <laughs> hard to do. Motherfucker. Hating ass nigga. Yeah. <laughs> but no, see, I, I separate that because, I mean, like you said, you can't listen to R. Kelly anymore. I can't personally because of what he did. I think it's, I think what the level of shit you do can stop someone from listening to the music. Hmm. I think Kanye, when it comes to... Like that. Like, just turn. If you don't like it, turn it off. Yeah. Click off. It's the internet, bro. We got the fucking internet. We have the internet now. I don't have to listen to a fucking word you have to say. Yeah. They give us shit to block people, and they give us shit like where we can mute shit. We don't have to look at you. Yeah, you can look up keywords and shit, and you can block out keywords. Yeah. I'm, if someone's calling me a consistent thing, here's this keyword. It'll never pop up in my feed. Matter of fact, you don't even have to be on the internet. You just choose to. That's true. <laughs> That's how I be. If you don't like my shit, bye. Someone else will. Yeah. Yay. You'll like something. That's very true. But so that's just me. I separate, you know, what people do from their music because I'm yeah. still going to fuck with their music regardless. All right. I'll say R. Kelly's talented, but he is an asshole. He's no. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I will say he is a terrible person. Man, they about to tear me up on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> He's a terrible person. Facts. But. He, he's talented. He's talented this shit. We can never knock the talent. I yeah. If he just he just got some shit to handle and sort the fuck out. <laughs> I still feel bad because shit like that, like people that do shit like that to that level have to be hurt two times as bad. I think that's just my empathy talking, but there's no excuse. No, definitely not. There's no excuse for doing what he did. Yeah, he's a fucking... He's an asshole. An asshole. Like, he's an arrogant one, like... Y'all should have gotten like, nah, you did it, bitch. It doesn't matter when you did it. Like, yeah, like he he, he did it, yeah. but he's talented. We'll say that. <laughs> well, I'll say he's talented. Yeah. Okay. Still a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> True. But when did you actually start? You know, getting from just being a fan of music to actually writing music. My 18th birthday. 18th birthday. I I was uh, I had a serious temper. Serious one is quick zero to hundred, and I didn't know how to speak. I didn't know what I was so angry. Shit, I wasn't close with my family. I wasn't close with anybody. I was just I felt alone, even with all these people around me, even with Jeremy, Pastor Keith. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, oh, uh, you know, I need an outlet. That's all I kept. I was like, I don't know how to fucking talk no more. Like I don't know how to talk. So when I figured out, I used to had a pen and pad. I was like, I'm gonna put all my anger in this shit. 
Shit was trash. Now that I look at it now, but it's <laughs> hard for what it was when I first. But you still got it? No, I don't even think I remember the shit. That was the first thing I ever memorized. I had said some real foul. I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> the punchline was cool, but I can't get away with it now. Oh. <laughs> um, but I wrote it and I felt instantly better. I was like, okay, if I can do this over and over, like it became obsessed with it. Like I became a student immediately after that day, and um, I started rapping and rapping for three years. These last two years, two to three years, I've been taking it very, very serious. Now that I have a flow, how to develop a flow, how to develop these things. And I was like, maybe I could fucking do this. Like, maybe I could actually do this because I'm getting real good at it. And it w- was that just you noticing you were getting good or was it people around you telling people you? People around me. I never. I was a kid that never really showed his raps unless he. It was. I knew I could compete. Yeah. I was real quiet. I used to really just do this for therapy. I started off as a gospel writer. And then I started off as being like poetry, like writing how I felt, trying to yeah. get all this out. I was hurt. Then it became, it just happened to manifest itself in the raps. And when it did that, it just, I was obsessed. And then like, I wrote six to seven times a day. Wow. Every day, my senior year. And how are you like studying, you know, bar structure and and flow and cadence? And was that just through listening to people? Listening or? to hella people. Like, uh, I think I got, I was always good at bending and putting words together. Mm-hmm. I naturally had a knack for it. I was always good at creative writing, too. So I would ask my creative writer teacher, writing teacher my senior year to just give me extra shit to do just because I wanted it. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched a lot of anime, and I was always good at, like, picking apart certain things, using references, and paid attention a lot to history. I was always reading random shit. So it was never nothing for me to be not clever, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Was, but to actually have a bounce and flow to it is something I had to develop in rhythm and counting bars. Like, I didn't know. I just figured, I, like, I think last year I just figured out what a bar was. It's two lines as a bar. Yeah. 16 times two. Yeah. Is that many lines. So I didn't know that. I was just writing until I couldn't no more. And then when this, when I feel like I was forcing, I'd stop. That's, that's really what it was. That's it. That's literally just me writing my feelings yeah. and it brought me here. And it's crazy, like bar structure and stuff is something that's so important that that's like the base, like the base to to actually writing a song. And a lot of and a lot of new artists don't know that. It's very important, man. It's the way you structure your songs is you have to really understand the importance of song structure. Granted, uh, you know, song structure changes over time no one really cares about it that much if you feel the song everything's about feelings now it's yeah evoking emotion um music changes every day like in every hour every second on the app like, yeah you know but and i heard there's something like four million songs uploaded every hour are you fucking kidding me? yeah god dude like it, see what i'm saying and now we're at the point where anyone can just oh i did this did it record mix put it out <laughs> put it out and I think uh, hooks and bridges and changes are very, like, chord changes and all that other shit is very, very slept on. I think it needs to be taught more. Because if you can, if I can trap you for three minutes, I can trap you in a room for 15. Yeah. That's and, very important. No one really knows that how important the bar structure is or how you structure a bridge and how it'll fall in on a certain instrument you put in your beat or, you know, it's just... It shouldn't be so microwave to me. Me. But yeah. I understand. I think it is definitely something that, I mean, rapping is a craft. And we'll get into this in just a second. Let me do a little shout out to the sponsors. Shout out to Fish Scale 84. Hey, Fish Scale 84. Head over to fishscale84.com. The sponsor of this episode. Head over. Get you some clothes. You're going to be the flyest motherfucker in the city. Also, once again, links will be in the description if you want if you want to donate to the Kiss a Pig fundraiser, support diabetes, support the people who need it. Links will be in the description. Shout out to Reneka App Builder for sponsoring this video. Also, let's get back into it with something better. Hola. <laughs> yes. So we were, you know, we were talking that rap is just, it's a craft. You have to, you have to take it seriously. You can't be half in. You can't, man. You can't be half in. You have to actually really care about what you do. And do you think that's kind of something that's, like, lost to a lot of these Very artists? Much so. Very much so. Because they just see the quick buck that they can make? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's just it's 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 just you know. It's wild. It's very wild. It's just also frustrating that people think a lot of artists get paid off their music. There's a few. Yeah. If we really keep it a buck. Come on, man. Like, who's really getting paid off of music? I didn't say anything else. I said music. Like, now. Off, off of the music, yeah. The streams now. If you're, you have to be, I don't know how much, but like a million streams. You would is, have to have billions of people. Yeah. Playing your shit. To actually make a living off of just music. Yeah. Just and, music. Yeah, and not a lot of people are doing that. You get lucky if you do that. Yeah. Like, it's three people really, really can live off. Like, we, we got to talk about people who were established the last decade and also now. Like, the last, like, from 2010 to 2015. Like, people think that you get paid off the music, but most rappers, if they're going to be making music, it's off of merch. Mm-hmm. Tours. To- and, and shows. Mm-hmm. That's, that's their main source of money shit and even then like if you don't own your publishing or your yes. masters you're fucked <laughs> you're not even really getting anything yeah so i mean merch is you know the main yeah <laughs> merch is one of the main thing that a lot of artists do to to make some money on the back end yeah because that's because that strictly goes back to them as well as branding and sponsors like sprite commercials all that shit that's yeah it's really your revenue <coughs> But, yeah, like you said, not a lot of people are actually just getting paid straight off of the music and not doing anything on the back end. Yeah, man. It's wild. It hurts my soul. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, you, like you said, I mean, you feel like that love for hip-hop and stuff is not completely there anymore for a lot of these artists? I want to think before I answer this question. <laughs> I want to be real smart when I answer this, man. I don't want to. Okay. Uh, I'll say the love. The hip hop hip hop is culture. Yeah. Right? Rap is the image. There's an interview, I don't know who it was, but there was a rapper who artist broke it down, right? Hip hop is the culture of existing anything. It's the tree. Rap is all the leaves and little branches. It's the image, the way you carry yourself. Mm-hmm. Branding, sponsoring, photos, video shoots, all that shit. Hip hop is the culture it'll never fucking leave and ever. If you look at the the way that we do the genre when they write it out on a tag, what does it say? Hip hop slash rap. Yeah, you know when someone calls rap and hip hop. Yeah, when someone calls you a hip hop artist, so, so you take that with pride. You know, when someone calls you a rap artist, it's prideful. You know, and it's not any more better. It's a huge tree. But what is hip hop now? Because now we got all different genres. Yeah, there's a bunch of sub sub genres and. But, but the love for hip hop will never die because the same people that use rock against hip hop, we don't. People don't even know that. Uh, when hip hop started, they just had a DJ, a turntable, dancing. If you watch the Get Down, it explains everything. Yeah, and then you had just not even a rapper. They just just, just loop. Yeah, just a loop on a thing. They would just loop it, and they didn't even have a rapper. They just had somebody who would say some sly shit mm-hmm. just to get the the crowd hyped. Facts, and then everyone would get to dance and having fun, living right, and also hip hop derives from all other genres. Blues yeah. records, jazz records, e, uh, EDM records. Uh, soul records, rock records, punk where You just look for the drum loop, anything. Swing records. So hip-hop is actually the bridge between all genres. Yeah. So how do you even claim hip-hop when you can't... If How you claim one thing and can't claim hip-hop? Hmm. We yeah. rush it, y'all. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is definitely a bridge between everything because... Back in you know everything was sampled, everything was was looped, everything was everything had a a breakdown, mm-hmm. and that's that was the basis to the parties. That was the basis to being the DJ. Was, I mean, at the time, even in the '90s, it was trying to find those those loops, trying to find those samples that, and, then, and you would dig into like orchestra, and you would dig oh, into like, and it was fun. Yeah, I don't think the love for hip hop dies is dying i think the respect and uh passion for it it's becoming more of a marketing ploy and a business oh, yeah. ploy than the love for it when there was balance you could have balance of of course you have to know the business the clip i just posted this morning <laughs> about mm-hmm. business is important like uh you know you have to know what you're doing but it's also you know the music without the music what do you have without the art what do you have you know without there's no labels without us yeah so we're the most vibe there's no Without someone needing you, you know the you have a you have a voice. What else? They wouldn't ask you to do this. Yeah. You know, like we run shit. The artists run shit, and when I think we flip that, 
and build our own labels. That's why Jay Z is the goat to me. <laughs> yeah, or Jay Z. I mean, shit. I mean, it's kind of like we. Not even just on the music side. He's. I mean, he's a great lyricist. He's a great. He has a great body of work. Great. But on the business side, business side is ridiculous. What they say, Jay Z is the first person to bring uh, build a, a business schematic that centers all back around him. And three, he basically built his own three sixty for himself. Oh yeah, which is ridiculous. And then to not even do that, but I'm sure he hadn't. A big influence on the way Beyonce got her her money. I don't want to say that. I'm well, like, I mean, <laughs> business wise, not like he did it per se, but Jay Z has a quote on an interview. I try not to. I try to avoid that. <laughs> Jay Z has a quote on an interview where he says, "Beyonce pulls stuff from me, and then I pull stuff from Beyonce." Okay, see, <laughs> but I mean, that's that's you know keeping it in. Keeping the money in the family. Of course. And that, then for generation to generation, too. That's oh, generational yeah. Generational wealth. That's they the ain't going to run out of money. Hell no. Come on now. Jay-Z shows up every to every award show in a t-shirt and blazer and some J's or some shit. <laughs> or his own shit. <laughs> yeah. Then, his own shit. And with his daughter, because he just his daughter wanted to go. I don't think he gives a fuck about a Grammy. No. He don't have to. You know? Like, his, his kids are, ain't going to run out of money. Facts. Because he put the work in. He, he put smart. the work in and he was smart on the business end. And I think so. Going back to the question, I think the 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 passion part of the music, the time we take with music, is dying. The respect for it is maybe wavering to some things, but I think because we have artists who care about the culture and who also want to make money, but also you know make sure that it's is is music first, image after. I think we uphold you know the balance of everything because I see a resurgence of people wanting actually substance yeah and music and wanting to hear something i see it that was my next question of what do you think of like music nowadays that people are putting out like i mean especially what's at the top charts i mean do you fuck with any of it yeah kid trunks is hard (laughs) kid (laughs) trunks i don't know that shit slap ski mask slaps asap slaps ski mask is one of my favorite artists right now come on how do you not like that man's flow yeah like (laughs) like ski mask is ridiculous with his flow and just because he kind of came out with something different than a lot of other artists right now. Yeah, man. Like even uh, Megan Thee Stallion. Yeah, I've been on her since the Houston Cipher she did. I think it was like a couple years ago. I saw that. I, I remember that. Yeah. And they got her clip singled out. I was like, <laughs> she smashed this shit. She hey. I was like, yo. After I heard the um, after I heard the poppin' remix she did, and then I was like, okay, that's dope as shit. I mean, she she's actually she she got bars. She nice, bro. Yeah, she How do she nice not with it. Like it. How do people not like it, man? Yeah, she's she's nice with it. Yeah, man. Uh, even um, who am I fucking thinking of? Jesus Christ. Uh, Maxo Cream is nice. He yeah. had to grow on me too. Yeah, he Maxo. I like Maxo. Uh, Vince is one of my favorite artists of all time. Vince Staples. Okay. And I think he, like, on the same shit we're talking about. It's kind of like, I think he'd have a great conversation with him if you ever got to interview him. I wish. I would love to. Earl was was one of my favorite artists for a long time. Earl is actually one of my first influences. Yeah. Into our future. Okay. See, Earl was r- crazy with it at a young age, too. Come on. I'm a hot and bothered astronaut crashing while jacking off the buffering vids of Asheroth eating applesauce. Like, come on. Like, that's just so much fun. And it's it's fun, and it was it was him. You can't. He never ran from him. That's just so No, cool. and he... he he didn't like hide who what like was going through his mind. He was just he was just a wild ass kid that was saying whatever the fuck he wanted to. Even on the song, one of my favorite songs is like an unreleased tape. I don't think he ever released it. it was off the Slat Tendencies tape. It's called Molly Wapped. Hmm. And uh, there's a song called Molly Wapped, and it's one of my favorite songs of all time. And also there's a song called Brand New that was on like the Our Future Talk mixtapes. Huh. Those older, yeah, those yeah. old. But Earl was one of one of my favorites. But what's your favorite album? Out of the whole Odd Future? No, nah, out of Earl's can, uh, compilation. I still can't figure it out. Um, or Odd Future, you can name. Them. I don't even. Man, that's a tough one. <laughs> that's hard. Um, I really do like his Earl tape. Yeah. Just that was that was whenever I was really getting into him. And that was probably the first project I heard from him. Before I heard anything else, it was the Earl song. The one with the video and everything. That video was wild. It was. That shit. I th- uh, did you hear the last thing he put out? Some rap songs? 
Uh, yes, I heard part of it. I didn't finish it. You got to finish it. I didn't listen to it all. And even that one that uh, I don't do shit, I don't... I don't like shit, I don't go outside. Yeah. Oh, man, grief is hard. Boil is my favorite. Man said, dip your, wa- dip your body in the water like a lifting tea bag and then switch to different for fucking whip and let the piggies keep past it. I was like, damn. He's, like, he's <laughs> wild with it. Y'all brought that shit to him. Y'all brought that shit. Is the camera back on? Yeah. yeah. Damn, we was talking about the baby. Shout out the baby, man. <laughs> that shit. Come on, man. Yeah, but we were talking about, you know, music nowadays. Music nowadays, I think, I mean, everything has an evolution period. Yeah. yeah history repeats itself. And that's what, that's what a lot of people don't understand is that, like, music is constantly evolving. All the time. And even if you don't like what's out, there's always something that you're going to like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you if, if you don't, if shit, you don't like Lil Pump, then fucking listen to Joey Badass or something. Listen, you, we have that. Bro, it's, it's not like back in the... Man, I'm so glad I'm old. It's not <laughs> like back in the day. Where, damn, I really just said that. Ugh. Like back in the day. Yikes, man. Yikes. Ugh. Let me try that again. It's not like a couple, a decade, a decade ago. Where that still makes you, you sound old. Fuck. Fuck it. It's not like a, like years ago. Better. <laughs> it's not like years ago where you had to wait on a CD. Like, dude, it's you can go on YouTube. We have... Bro, I don't understand why people trip. We have phones, y'all. Like, I'm not looking at. I'm gonna look at this camera right here. We have phones, like, with internet. Some have Androids. Some, some have, have iPhones. Android, some have iPhones. Some have Nextel chirps and shit. Still, some people still got uh, Alcatels, and you know what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> some people got Windows phones. But we but have access. We have access to an infinite amount of knowledge. If you don't like it, you will find. If you just take three seconds to Google something awesome. Or something you think you think is a genre, you gonna find something you like, and it's gonna be a billion results. Yep. Or you could just search something better. Oh yeah, do that too. Yeah. I, oh, and I put all my albums back up. Appreciate y'all. And I'm working on my new uh, new shit. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, there's billions and millions of fucking music that you can go through. If you don't like what's on the radio, there's turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got XM radio. We have, we have aux cords. <laughs> we could just listen to yeah we got bluetooth we have soundcloud we have soundcloud we have come on man. apple music spotify title it's no nah, let me say this there's man. a beezer Nigga, see weezer we some, got deezer and deezer Audio mac and free you got sway we have radio shows that just be premiering shit yeah come on man hell people are lazy i wish people would just shut the fuck up when they see <laughs> you they're not gonna do shit to you no <laughs> they're not gonna say shit it's just easy to hide behind your little computer and be like Oh fuck this nigga music. This this shit's whack. Okay, well then this fucking whack. don't well, listen don't to listen, it. Don't listen, bro. Like thanks. Like I n- I never understood the person that will listen to a song and be like this is whack and then like actually take like the the time to to type it out and shit like This is how I think they look. I saw I like you know, this, like, this is uh, whack. This is fucking whack. You fucking disgrace to hip hop. Then I'm gonna be like V Thanks for buying my album. <laughs> like, thanks for listening thanks to it. Thanks for listening. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, be, you don't oh, have to like it. Somebody else will. Someone else will. I mean, you can bounce off to my fucking page if you want. Hey, yeah. I mean, or just tell your friends. Tell them to come you listen to. How too. long it takes to actually just get to someone's page you want to attack? Like, I'm going to log into this app. Wait for this slow shit that uh, log in. IG is going to pull up depending on my service. I'm going to search this person. Just go that search I hate. for them. I'm going to search this person. You just gave me a statistic. I'm going to go to their page. I'm going to DM them mm-hmm. hate. And then I'm going to go in their comment section. Yep. And I'm going to just be. <laughs> I hate this shit. Bitch, get off my page and go find something you like. <laughs> <laughs> so, what sets you apart from other artists in the city? I'm dope. I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm dope. That's it. <laughs> no. Uh,. I, don't, I think my energy. I, I I find myself in certain. Maybe it's just me, but I, I I'm really aware of certain things. I find myself like I got a beast inside. Like it's kind of like I don't I don't let no one think they can upper hand me. You can't, little bro. Me, you're not gonna overlook me. Like you're gonna know I was here. B was here. You're gonna know I was here. Whether or not you show up to the shows. Like, yeah. oh, did y'all remember that nigga? There's gonna be one person if I leave a show. You know what I'm saying? Like. I come in with a presence I like. I think you saw it this last show I did at the Houston Indie Fest by Bob Breezy. Shout out yeah. Breezy. Shout um, out Bob Breezy. Uh, shout out and uh, shout out Baron Studios. You know they they did that too. And oh yeah, they, they did. They did my album as well. So I, I saw that you were at Baron Studios. That's my shit. Shout <laughs> out Jason. Shout out 
uh, Phenomenon. She just dropped the pro project. Yeah, she her. did. Shout out to Phenomenon. I had her on here last weekend. Yeah, yeah. She's awesome, man. And she has a book out. Y'all need to read. Read some, fool. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know she, she had a book. See? She is an author, and she's touching on some very uh, important talk- topics. I did a whole interview with her, and she didn't bring up her book. It's out. You can go on Amazon and order it, and I think it's in Barnes & Noble, too. Yeah, so I don't know why she didn't bring it up. She should have shouted out her book. Oh, man, I'm going to do it for her, then. She's dope. She needs respect. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, hey, go check out the book. I might check it out and actually read something for once. Yeah, man. What, were we talk- what was the question? I'm sorry. I love it. I love this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was asking you what, what sets you apart. Sets me apart. I don't know yet. <laughs> hmm. I don't know yet. I think I um I don't really take time to think about it. I just always make them shit I always wanted to hear that I wasn't hearing. I make what I enjoy and if you enjoy it that only makes it better for the experience. I think um yeah. it divide it, I set myself apart cuz I respond to everything. I be I want to be as human as possible. I don't ever act like a rapper. Like that's what's for what? Cause I'm gonna go home. You want to be approachable. Yeah, I don't want to be unapproachable. And I think sometimes me wanting to be approachable and me being myself makes it look unapproachable. Cause my energy is like, ah, yeah. like it's. I can calm down, and then I can be. Two minutes later, I'm outside water taco wilding, <laughs> like eating a burrito and some shit. Hey, hey, water taco, get this man a sponsorship, please. I fuck with y'all, please, like. <laughs> It's get this man a sponsorship. He done told five people about it today. Yeah, man, I'm really out here. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get with a. Trying to get that. He's, he money. fucks with your tortas. <laughs> I do. Beef one is nice. I'm trying to stay away from pork. You are. Yeah, I'm trying. I suck, man. I'm trying to stay away from pork. I love bacon too much, man. It's oh. I had bacon earlier today. It was delicious. Yeah, man. Damn it. <laughs> it's good as fuck. What? And also, I think it's a. Uh, I, think my, uh, I don't know if you would call it arrogance. I think it's my attitude. It's like when I come into, I come prepared. Like I'm not gonna walk into anything unprepared. You know, unprepared. Like I'm gonna tear you up. Like please come prepared. You want to go against me? Please, please. Have you ever thought about battle rapping? I did before. I'll never do that shit again, bro. What? Why? <laughs> my first battle rap was actually just some fun shit, and I thought it was serious. And now I look back, I was like, bro, we could have gotten in trouble. Like just <laughs> passing, but like. Um, statue of limitations though. Uh, uh, and we were filmed it and I tore this man apart and I realized how much work it takes to be a battle rapper and then the consequences of it you get boxed into that life you do I know a lot of battle rappers that even people who are main battle rappers you have people like Daylight and shit that still try to shake that of being nice. just a battle rapper and then what, what the problem is Marv One is an example of someone who can do both Mm. His sound soundtrack of Autumn is one of the one of my favorite albums, with the Fat Killers. He did the last track called Surgery. That shit's nice. You should check that out. I will. I got the vinyl. <laughs> I got the vinyl of it. I'm happy about that. Um, the you you it's like you don't know how to do songs no more over time. Like after I I did one like I did one battle and I wasn't even serious like I was just rapping, and then I knew I was trying to be more clever and then I tried to go back and make a song and I was acting like i was battle rapping i'm like i can't get out like it's it's a whole nother world it's it's crazy it's and it's, I, I i salute the people who could do it because that shit's hard yeah it's it's very very um it's very hard to do and you know like they be up there some people do five they do three rounds and you got to know all your verses you see how long the verses is yeah i memorize my shit i know how long one verse take they're doing like 84 bars Two verses, two verses each, and then like, no, like what? Eighty-four bars first round, sixty-four another round, then like the last one is just, and then you got to connect punchlines and double mm-hmm. entendres, and then you got to deal with the crowd, and then you're having to make sure the crowd get it. Like it's different, man. Like it's it's a whole other world. They're a different breed of rappers, artists. I think if 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 rappers and artists who ain't from that life try to go against a battle rapper, you're going to get destroyed. Just because they're genetically engineered, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to be beast. Hey, shout out to Houston Barcode, Scotty Raps. Shout out to Breda Blaze. I heard about that shit. Hey, they it's different over there. It's a it's wild to I was, see. I've seen a clip. I was like, I'm not ready. <laughs> yeah, it's it's wild to see somebody battle rapping. So you've actually tried it though, but I did. I succeeded. I think the the bar that I went over was in the second round. <laughs> he came at me with fat jokes, and I was like three hundred and ten pounds. Like, bro, if you don't. I know you better not come at me with no fat jokes, bro. 
like that's that. like the basic joke yeah like he's like oh, this old titch i'm like bro I'll f- i told this man uh i can't repeat the bar <laughs> for the time it was but like i was like you the type of nigga to run trains at the gay parade like and i, was, I just tore his because he kind of come at me hard and i was like you can come at me hard i'm gonna just emasculate your ass <laughs> i told him like uh how you trying to be the goat with my, uh i mean uh it's like don't ever pick up a pen show respect to the god because even Jesus wouldn't die for your sins, type shit. I see. You. I like it. So that was like my first punchline. Just basically like playing with shit. I like it, man. So why should people kind of like tap into you? What do you got planned for the future? Of course, more music, but also hella more shows and visuals. That's what I'm working on. I haven't been making a lot of music. I'm just sitting on stuff. Uh huh. Um, I'm working on a visual right now, so you're gonna get some visuals off of XL. Every every song on there, I damn near have a visual for, except for one. Um, it's just taking me time to storyboard it, where I can explain it to someone else. Yeah, I got anxiety, so. <laughs> um, and also, I think people should expect just. I'm a fucking revolutionary, man. I want to do bigger shit. It's bigger than music in my head. It's like this is just come on, man. Like, I'm happy about music. Like, yeah. music is therapy. I'm gonna do it for the rest of my life. Like, I I can't not do it. I can't not think about it. There's not a day I don't spend listening to music there's not an hour i don't do it so i plan to it's a world it's my own world valasia this shit is what you expect it's like everything i embody is everything that be moral code i embody everything. i was gonna ask you what is valasia best answer i could give you is a world for people like me as well as like anything you think is you know like festivals and shit my hand is gonna be in it's basically like some world domination shit. Like, huh. like I plan to like have up my stamp, like educating kids on business, doing community organizing, you know, trying to have a helping communities or even just I find myself to be a caring person. So like, all right, cool. If if I can build my own world and my own foundation, I can try to help people as much as possible, even if it's just taking the clothes off of my back, helping someone who ain't got no clothes. Fuck it. Yeah. And that's what Malaysia is. It's the world I see myself in when I'm happy. Like, it's like an I'm, ideal world for you? Yeah. yeah. A world of people who are like-minded. Okay, okay, yeah. It's based around peace. We will not tolerate... How did you no come up with that name, though? Uh, I like... Uh, okay, so SB the Villain was my first name. I saw, I saw that. It's my email. It was SB the Villain was my first name. And I took that SB. Came, then it was SB. So yeah. I looked back. I was like... Valasia. I made Valasia before I started rapping. Oh, okay. That's crazy, right? So I was in high school with that shit. I was like, Valasia, motherfucker. I was like, oh, that's hard. So I took, I said, the Valasia part, right? So Bill, villain. So I yeah. took just Bill, right? A I N. So I took that off. Valasia is like Malaysia. I was thinking of uh, the Underachievers album. Uh, ex- the one with the, it's the one that before they dropped this one. It's the one before a uh, uh, night. Uh, what's it called? Nights in Flatbush. What it was called? Shit. It's it's the one with um. Fuck. The cover art is fucking ridiculous. I think it's Exordium or something like that. Salador. Mm. That one. And I love the Underachievers at the time. And they were saying like words mean everything. Like words are very important. Even the sound of words are aesthetically gorgeous, right? Yeah. Certain like so I was like, damn, if I'm trying to build a city, I gotta pick some beautiful ass shit. Like I'm not gonna have no ugly ass name and people think they're gonna come indulge in it. <laughs> <laughs> when you say Valais, it just sound like rolls off the tongue, it's smooth, it's nice, you can bend it, you can do a whole bunch of shit. It's you know, it's um I said, Okay, Malaysia. And I was going through different countries and shit. Malaysia looks really pretty to me if you look up photos of malaysia i'm gonna have to do that it's gorgeous like it's just not nice. to look it up it's really really nice i got photos on google and shit i plan to visit that shit hopefully that don't ruin my shit but uh, <laughs> i just was like Malaysia, and i was like that shit sounds gorgeous and so i was like all right bet that's the one and then i ran with it and then it, then after that you know getting influenced by huey p newton and shit and other shit and malcolm and then you just go revolutionize your shit <laughs> and then mm. you just oh i need a brand name why not make it my own shit uh, and then like it took on a natural organic role of itself like i guess the v shit too is just yeah the logo the sorting version of it is everything i embody is my codes every my ethics everything you know i think um Malaysia is a world i live in that i am slowly inviting people to hmm 
Imagine yeah. like the hyperbolic time chamber, Namek and Earth. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's different. It's cool. Thanks, man. You're creating Thanks. your own world. Yeah. And it's labor. Soon. 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 Okay. Hey, soon. Valaysia Valaysia raps? Soon. No, I just Malaysia direct just, just label. Soon, soon or sooner than soon. It might be already done. You never know. Oh. We'll see. <laughs> Eyes wide, people. <laughs> well, that's dope. I like it. I fucks with it. I like the shirt. Thanks, man. The, the, I like the, the V with the, the exclamation point. Yep, that was the plan. That was, um, that's, uh, like, I'm also, I, I started watching the V for Vendetta movie. Yeah. I'm going to do it again. But... I, I saw clips and pieces, and I, under, I and I look at that mask. And I'm like, I understand what it means. I think I get it. I think I get it. It's like, I don't like wearing a mask, man. I don't like being around people that act like they give a fuck about some shit. I've seen people do that shit who were cool with me, and I just I can't fuck with you. Like, <laughs> like we'll talk about a dude album and be like, yo, I don't even like it, bro. Like, shit, whack. I'm like, okay, that's fine. You have your opinion, yeah. but when you see the man, <laughs> don't don't say that. Don't say you liked it. You'll see the dude saw the dude and was like, oh, I, I like your album. I fuck with him. I'm like, yeah, that's dope album. And I, I looked dead at him. I was like, Are you fucking lying? You lying? Like, shut up. Like, that's not the that's not the truth. <laughs> like, and I'm that type of. I just I don't like pulling the wool over people's eyes. I feel like if I have something that can benefit someone else, don't fucking be selfish. And like, you don't want even you wouldn't want somebody to do that to you. Like, that's just weak. Yeah, you wouldn't want them to be like, man, that's something better. It's trash. But then whenever he sees you, he's like, man, that's just dope. That's the internet. Yeah. Niggas can, you know, at their mama house typing. <laughs> Niggas whack. Hey, yo, can I get a feature in your DM? The fuck out of here. <laughs> Keep it a buck, man. Yeah. I it's, mean, just be makes, real. It makes everything easier. It's like, we ain't got to play the cut corners game. It's so weird. It's like working at your job with a bunch of petty ass shit. It's like, yo, I'm going to bounce one, two, three before I and talk about this person. Instead of he's five feet across the department, I can go just go talk. Yeah. Man, I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> That's how it is, you know, social media and people just hide behind shit. Even and then we got the internet. There's an infinite amount of weight. You know, fuck, <laughs> fuck them niggas. Let's focus on something better. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Ah, look, something better. <laughs> Let, let's get into, like, kind of like, I want to know what your writing process is like whenever you're sitting there. Because uh, your bar structure and, and everything seems very meticulous and, and planned out. Oh, yes, it is. So... How is it getting into something and actually writing? Okay, you got to ask particularly about what song. Because some of them songs is actually me being lazy. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like me just off the top, just being clever. Not even trying to. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's get into it. One. Let's pull it up. <clears throat> that XL album, I don't even listen to no more. Let's see. The, this is the last one I was listening to. Last laugh. Yep. Yeah. Hey, let's just let everybody listen to it for a little bit. That shit sounds so good, don't it? Don't it make you feel good? It does. <laughs> okay, let's let's see here. Let's hear it. It's no way, no such thing as only the Bond Bob, by the way. Follow him. He's dope as fuck. He'll be on my, we have a joint project coming up. all in your rotation and no waiting. And when my shit come up, nigga, don't change it. Hey. Flow dangerous. I hope you got your diapers ready. This shit different. This here is livid. The righteous medley. Mix the combination. Fix the compilation. Let's have a back and forth like a good conversation. I go first. The banter will make your soul burst. Morphing into the neighborhood. Stephen Colbert. My soul thirst for knowledge while you covert. Niggas is looking for picking any of your soul. Curse. It's like them house niggas I making they return again. Getting ignorant. I gotta make them learn again. I gotta yearn into deserving what we're turning with. Before I end up being a person that they turning in. I gotta go to be a leader that my people seeking. I'm a rapping behemoth seeking a solid allegiance. I need a team. That bar, that bar. Okay, so that bar, I lost my mind because I know how hard that is to flow on that beat. I know I personally know how hard that is to he. I was like, shit, damn it. <laughs> Let's go back. Let's go. I'm a rapper, but he was seeking a solid allegiance. That's, that's a tongue twister just saying it slowly. 
I gotta be a leader that my people seek, and I'm a rapping behemoth seeking the side of the legion. Like, you know how hard, like, and especially on that beat. Yeah. You know, he jumped out of pocket. If you listen to it, he jumped out of pocket and rode the descent huh. to do that, then fell back into the drums. That's, that's, see, that's, that's wild. Whenever somebody can do something like that. Like, I, like, we were, I was in there when he recorded that too. We were in the same session at Baron. I was like, bro, I hate you right now. <laughs> like, I hate you. But damn it, man. I can, I like rapping with you. Rapping with him, uh, that's Divine Ba. Uh, you know, rapping with him, it's few rappers I feel like I ever had, I really get nervous. I like feeling like, I like feeling like shit. I like feeling like you can kill me. I like that shit. Like, it helps you still, makes you want to come harder and step I it wanna, up. I want to be surrounded by savages. Like, cool, we friends outside, but when we hit this booth, I'm going to tear you apart, you know? Yeah. That's the people I like, but also can make content. Because the memory is a business, so we got to make songs. But he is the first person I ever feel like I'm going to have to bring my A game every time or I'm going to lose if I slip. And he will... Kill you on your own song. Yeah, he's nice. <laughs> Dude is nice. Like, I, I, man, damn, he just, he's nice. That's all I got to say. Okay, so the writing process for this one, how was it? All right, for me, I don't know how it was for him, but for me, yeah. I was pissed. Uh, the song is very influenced by a situation between me and Pastor Keith. I'm not going to go too deep in it, but let's say, you know, shit happens. Yeah. From my perspective, until that man's sitting right in front of me. I'm not gonna talk about it out of integrity. Yeah. Um, personally, I get pissed about it because it makes no fucking sense. We were friends for a decade before this music shit, so I call him Jeremy. Yeah. That's how I call him. So, so there's bars in there, just my anger and my emotions and everything going on in life, me getting turned down from jobs. So, you want me to break it down bar for bar? I mean, if you want to. Yeah, I think I got time. I think I got time. So, name a nigga better than better. I'll wait. Like I'm bench pressing the gym. Like. So it's like name that Ice Cube says, uh, if your shit don't come off hard, your first bar, scrap it. Scrap mm. the whole song. It doesn't matter. So I always try to intro my first four bars being dope. Like, listen. So name a nigga better than better. Uh I'll wait. Like I'm bench pressing the gym. If you bend the word I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. Mm -hmm. Like I'm bench pressing the gym. Drops and their minds quake. Like a gym dropping. It's like a bridge on. Yeah. Drops in their minds quake. Pressurized thoughts and diamonds come out of minds. Running back to starting lines to finish this entendre. So when you pressurize, you know, what's it called? Coal, what happened? Diamonds. Diamonds. Make the pressure make bus pipes and makes diamonds. <laughs> you know? Like pressure. I'm under so much pressure. I'm hurt right now. I'm trying to. Nah, I'm not going to fold though. Like, so diamonds only can come out of me. You're only going to see me shine. You know? And if you look at it also, it's like. Uh, drops a gem and they minds quake pressurized thoughts and diamonds come out of minds like minds mind diamond minds yeah so if you run it back to starting lines to finish this entendre alright going into the verse now uh, clear my sinus let my rhymes break records billboards I scorch doing it my way I don't give a fuck about billboard charts man. Yeah. it's just all fickle records billboards I scorch doing it my way overflow of pain like you PMS on a work day that's you know we know who that is we know who that is PMS on a work day, don't ever bite my style. It should be cramping like heavy leg days. Yeah. Okay. So leading back into cramps from overflow and then like leg days. Going back into like gym shit and gym shit. Yeah. Uh, bitches and bitch niggas alike. I like fools. Keep a G. Feel the force in this verse when I drop jewels. G force jewels. Yeah. So like G, when I drop jewels, like drop it like something for you to listen. Keep it G. Like I'm gonna keep it a buck with you or a thousand really. So keep, keep it, it one thousand. Wow. One thousand. It's like. I hear, I'm, 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 if I'm your friend, I'm gonna keep it a buck. If you can't, I'm keep it a thousand. If you can't take it, move. Cause I'm not gonna ride your dick when you fuck up. I'm gonna be with you. I'm lower to you, but that's as far as it goes, right? So it's like, uh, uh, keep it, keep it G. Feel the force in this verse when I drop jewels. Feel me like braille, tatted on brittle bone. Like you can feel this. You know you feel this. Don't front. So. Feel me like braille, tatted on brittle bone. Impact his head on, can't clash with CEOs. So impact his head on, like a collision, but when you say head owned, can't clash with CEOs. So like owning. So yeah. Like, I'm a leader with these bars, oversee it like COs. 
Pray to COs collecting my checks from work sold. I never chose to sell soul for work. I stay gold. Cause most niggas like hoes. We check them like POs. Pap smear your name off of the globe. Your buzz blown. It's kind of like spots where you cop get knocked on. And if cops know knocking you lock like cell phones in a cell. Heart frail from front in a fake roll. Cause that's how the shit goes. Most deaf he gon' fold. He's six nine with these dimes and dropping the break codes. We know what that means. Don't perpetrate some shit you're not about. It's people that be selling drugs for a look. Like, there's the real nigga shit. People that do the shit they do, like the rappers, the rappers say the shit on their records, won't even be having no cameras on them, won't, don't want no cameras. They really don't enjoy it. That shit, all people that do shit like that don't enjoy it. They yeah. tell you not to do it. That's why I be laughing at niggas when they believe the niggas. <laughs> laughing, <laughs> believe in rappers. Uh, where was I at? 6 uh, 9 and drop down to break. You know, we know what that is. Six to six nine story. Yeah. And per, once again, perpetrating some shit you're not about when you could have just played your lane. He could have been one hundred with it and just did his music and. He not, was dope already. Yeah. He but, didn't. He didn't have to do all that shit. But okay. Six nine dropping the break codes. That's why I moved loan with few. Snow clones, large circle set you up for nothing. A small roll of bidgies is like plenty to a nigga who weak. Thriving off the energy from the like on the tweet. Strip a source of dopamine, give it time. You'll see what kind of niggas on your team I turned four to a three and had seven. I really realize when people can't hide behind money and accolades, a lot of people now, including my pops, you can't hide behind your shit, you tend to break when you start to get exposed. When you hold a mirror up in someone's face, they don't like it. You can't hide. We know who you are. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Don't be fake with me. Huh. If you call yourself my friend, there's rules that come with that. I, don't, I take that word serious. I got two friends. I uh, I have one. I mean, eh. Solid. Nah. That's it, man. I'd rather <laughs> be surrounded by one real person and or by myself than be surrounded by a bunch of dick riders and fuck niggas. Yeah. So, that's G shit. I could walk this earth alone. I'm going to keep my head up. You don't want to be surrounded by people that are, are just just as quick to, to sell you out or talk shit behind your back. Exactly. Toxic. Yeah. I ain't gonna say the shit to my face, man. You know? I know how that is. Respect is everything to me. I know exactly how that is. All right? Uh, where was I at with it? Uh, I said, uh, uh, super source of dopamine. Give it time. You'll see what kind of niggas on your team. I turned four to a three and had seven. And niggas turned snakes for a beach. But I get it. It's arrows over Philly, yo, sheesh. And I dismiss the love if your loyalty weak. I sound hard this right. Well, fuck him. If he peeped it, he peeped. I can't control. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. Mm. I only advise you're gonna listen to me if you want to. Um, it's a uh, that bar is meant for the person. He knows who he is, so it is. It is. It is. It applies to a couple people as well. You know who you are, and if you are ready to talk about it, you know where I be. <laughs> you know where I am. You can always talk. <laughs> talk. A lot of people don't uh, like take the time to just sit and talk things out because it's easier to run. It's easier. Yeah. To be yeah. Sheep. It's easier to be a sheep and hide. It is. You know? It's easier not to just trying to try to sweep it under the rug and and act like you never gave a fuck. Yeah, or act like nothing ever happened. Like Yeah. I mean, nah, like I even have people nowadays that like shit. I ain't gonna I'm not gonna try to front like I'm cool, like I it is what it is. Until we talk it out. Yeah, I have no respect for said person about that bar, one of the people, until they are able to stand up like a man and comes off to me. I deserve that. I deserve that respect. Okay. You need, like, niggas hide behind their phones. That shit's pussy to me. Yeah. That's I mean, I hey, but you broke it down. I broke it down, and then I said, uh, I get it. It's arrows over filio sheets, and I'll dismiss the love at the loyalty week. I sound heartless, right? Fuck you. If you peep that you peep, I'm 23, and only getting wiser, my G, because niggas swear they feel psychic. Marking out all the sheep. I'm calling bullshit before the shit peak is a beef, and I'll believe it when it's corpse is not slugs in a tweet. I wish people would stop believing the word it's a beef because niggas is tweeting. Why are you tweeting out? Why are you snitching on yourself about something you're going to do to somebody? That's that's a charge. Yeah. Like, stupid. Like, I don't believe nothing, bro. Show me someone. If someone, if, like, people be walking up to me sometimes at work because they know I listen to hip hop a lot or someone I'm having a conversation with and they be like, yo, did you see about whoop, whoop, whoop and like uh, Drake and uh, Kanye and shit? I'm like, someone die. Hmm. All right, then nothing happened. Niggas just talking. And I don't think anyone wants that on their brain cells. So I don't think both of them dudes is really going to hurt nobody. No. Nah. It's just easy to talk shit. And if you look at it, it's a pub, it's a publicity stunt. Because after that, Drake drops something and Kanye drops something. Come on, bro. Niggas is, niggas is friends. <laughs> <laughs> niggas ain't about to do shit to nobody. No, nah, definitely not. They got too much to lose. <clears throat> Facts. And then I said, uh, 
uh, see you. LOL. This shit is so confusing to me. People finally get, niggas finally get successful and return to the streets, and I don't get it. That's probably why my shit doesn't peak, and I don't hide behind an image that he giving UV. It's me. You know, that's self explanatory. Like, yeah. It's like, catch me in person, catch me in the mic, catch me on Instagram, catch me at work. I'm the same. It's not going to change. Like, what I, I ain't, I'm not hard to find, bro. <laughs> like, like, and that's just who I am. Come on, man. What are we trying to put up an image for? Like, when you go home, when you're trying to act, that's real. What are you acting for? If someone constantly wants to change you, like they ain't meant for you, fuck them. Like, real recognize real. Yeah, definitely. Man, so you broke it down. That's your verse. Yeah, man. Definitely is my verse. I love this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, wanna... you do it for real, though. I mean, you, you definitely take time and, and structure and, and definitely take your time to actually write some shit that, that you're proud of. Yeah. Um, Words are very important to me. Like, words are my weapons. They either build or destroy. You know, like you can. I get a kick out of saying something important because I don't give a fuck about the ratings from it. I don't even listen to my music sometimes after I put it out. Mm. I wait like months. I go check back on it, and someone told me, like, uh, I, I helped someone out their depression. What? Well, that's, 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 that's dope to me. That's, that's, that, you know. As music, music helps people in ways you don't even realize whenever you're putting it out. Mm-hmm. You don't put it out with the intention to help, like, like oh, I want to help that person. But it, whoever finds it and, and listens to it and, and relates to it, that's all the better. Helping impoverished people, picking, helping impoverished people, picking, oh, I forgot what the fuck the acronym was. I think it's hip hop. So helping impoverished people. And protecting oppressed people. We help people. This shit helps people. It does. I think that's the acronym, but that's something I use it for. I mean, it, it definitely helps people can relate to it in so many different ways, and people, you know, relate to to music through the through the way it makes them feel, through the things that they're going through. Yeah, man. People are too damn selfish, man. When you die, you don't take none of the shit with you. Why don't you use your time here wisely? That's real. See. Something better, man. Dropping gems. Doing hey. Something better. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, getting into your like your your Instagram and stuff. Like you said, whenever you were uh, battle rapping, you were kind of a heavier guy. Yeah. And then what kind of just made you want to switch your life around? Uh, what what age were you whenever you? Still working at Kohl's. So 2017. It's 2019 now, I'm 23, I'll be 24. So 2016, 2017, I think. What, you just you decided to change your life I around? I woke up, couldn't breathe. Like, I could bear, my asthma woke me up. I would have died in my sleep, I felt like. Wow. It was, like, crazy. And then that was it? Uh, cleared out everything that was, like, unhealthy in my fridge. That was mine that I bought. Yeah. And uh, went outside and just walked out for air. Like, I couldn't breathe. Like, I was just breathing. And I was just like, oh, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? Fuck my, I'm black. My whole face was red. Like my whole body was look looking like a jar of Kool Aid. Wow. So basically Kool Aid and shit. So I was just like, oh, I can't fuck with this. Like I can't do this no more. After that day, I drank nothing but water. I was doing like eight liters of water. I think at the peak, of me losing my weight and just walking outside six times, just walking, not even just outside in the heat, just doing shit and being outside, having a healthy sleep schedule. I wasn't even working out this time. Yeah. And uh eating better like mad veggies hella veggies staying away from sugar and juice i just i couldn't i like i couldn't do that shit no more i got evaluated um a lot of like shit they was giving me for depression was fucking me up i don't advise no one to take that shit that shit is terrible for you it is it is (laughs) Uh, a lot of that medication is really bad for you shit is very terrible for you and also not that this matters it may matter to somebody you look at the past cases of people who have done terroristic acts like school shooters or anybody, you can, if they go through their brain, like the, what was in their body systems is SSIs and SSRIs and not depressants. Mm. And actually those have a cause over time of losing brain memory, uh, brain damage. You um, you actually lose more, less temper. Like you have more of a temper ever. you more depressed. You sleep all day. The fuck out of here, nigga. That shit's like crack. <laughs> like yeah. that's the worst it's, thing. It's ever. bad for you. And I knew how bad it was when I had that shit leave my body. Your body weathers, you can't sleep for days at a time. Like, 
don't want to eat anything. You're slumped all the time. That shit's the worst thing ever. Fuck that shit. Listen to your kids, man, when they say they hurt. So, man, that was just a, a wake up call for you. Yeah, all that shit was that was bad, man. I I was I've never been more afraid in my life, man. I called my dad, ain't nobody answer. Like <laughs> my mom, she was busy. I couldn't. I was just like, oh, what the fuck is going on? Like, I showered for like two hours with cold water, and I was hot still. Like I was just, what the fuck is going on? He never thought about to call like an ambulance. Nah, or? I didn't. I was just trying to survive at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like ambulances for a reason. I won't. I, they all heard about that on the project. <laughs> um, uh, I ran outside and then I was just like, "Hey, Tariq, <laughs> like my friend Tariq." I was like, "What do I do?" Because he's in school for all that, and his mom is a licensed doctor and shit. So I was like, "What do I do?" Go get some water. Go to sleep. That's all he told me. Go get some water. Stay outside until you can steadily breathe. Take your heart rate. I had a blood pressure machine, and then go to sleep again. When you wake up, you're going to be hungry. Get some good food. Like, do your research. And after that, I started from there. Damn, so that was just a whole, that was a whole journey of. I had to go into work like that, bro. Of just bettering yourself. Yeah. I hated everything at that time. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But even now, you're still, you know, you're hitting the gym every day. Yeah, every day. That's wild. I used to just go four, to- four times a week. I go every day now. That's that's dedication. Night. Yeah, it's uh, you. I love it, man. Like, learning how to, you know, like, people work out like when you really figure out what you're working out for is not for aesthetics or weight loss. Really, you really just work out for the inside of your body, insides and your mental health. Yeah, there's a lot of mental health that goes into it. Mm-hmm. So much stuff that goes into it, you know. So I appreciate that more than ever. That's you know that's good. I mean, shit, it's inspiration to to anybody who. You can, if anybody can do it, shit. <laughs> <laughs> anybody can do it. Just better yourself. Just, just you know, and it's not. And you're already a good. Like I don't want no one to. Yikes, man! Image is every. It's so weird. It's, it is. Be yourself, please. It's so much easier. Fuck them people. <laughs> I swear to God, the right people in your life will come to you. It's, you know. I'll talk for me. If I like somebody, let's say a girl. If I like somebody, I like you bare face. I don't, I don't care nothing about your excess shit. I like you for you. Like, it's period. Like, I be feeling like there's so many, so much bullshit. Like, bro, like, you don't have to do that. Like, why are you, why are you spending all your time? It, of course, you want to be pretty. Like, of course, like, that makes you feel good. Cool. But it's just like, if that's. You looking at someone else to justify you. That is crazy to me. I can't understand that. And it hurts. I be looking at even dudes too. I'm like, bro, like this person gives no fucks about you. How do you feel about you? And that's how I'm saying it, bro. And I mean, I care about a lot of things. So that shit about society kills me, man. Because that's something really, when I see it to someone I'm like really connected to, too. You know, like it. It bothered me. I was yeah. like, I'm, oh, I don't care. It made me feel like shit. It made me feel bad. Like, hmm. I'm not, like, acknowledging shit. I'm like, nah, I, like, the most important thing is how people feel about you as a person, not outside. If people only judge you by your outside not and don't get to know you fucking people. They lame. That's how I feel. Hmm. I said that, kids. Fuck them people. <laughs> <laughs> Real shit. Fuck this internet shit. These niggas is not cool. That's facts. So, what projects are you working on? What are you, you know, doing right now in music? I'm working on, um, yikes. You actually caught me in between a lot of projects. <laughs> um, so, you're working yeah, on more than one? Yeah, more than one. All the time. I like keeping my options open. I like, because I make a whole bunch of different shit. Hmm. Um, like I said, the dude that was on the Philly versus Arrows track. Yeah. Divine Ball. Am I allowed to... I hope you don't get mad, but we're working on something. <laughs> I don't know if it's a project yet, but it's something very, very dope. Um, we're right now looking for artists and cover art. Okay. Someone's supposed to be working on it. I think he's busy with school and shit, so I'm open to anyone who else is dope. Majority like sketches and cartooning. Okay. And uh, abstract work, so I'd appreciate that. Um, yes, we will bring the bag. <laughs> we have the bag if we can afford it, so we good. But... Um, also, I'm working on my own project. It's called Tired. 
when you exhale something, you get tired. Yeah. You, know, you let off all that emotion. The so last one was exhale. This one's tired. Tired. And this is actually a, it's more hip hop themed. It's it's hip hop themed, but it's moder- It's not too corny. Yeah. And you get to see the, I'm going to give you the face value for exhale. That was face value. Now you're going to see how, like, you're going closer to how I've been feeling on a day-to-day basis. You're going to see my raps come out. You're going to see a better MC out of me. So that's the second. Okay. That's what I'm working on. I'm working on. What else? Oh, just the business side of shit, too. I'm working on getting that shit in order. So expect cool shit with that. Expect Mm. more shit for y'all. So when can people expect these? Or there's no date or nothing? I don't do that. I stopped doing that. You should stop putting dates on them? Yeah, expectations ruin shit, man. Yeah, that's true. I like, man, I'm too damn perfectionist. I'm too much of a damn perfectionist. I'll say some shit and be like, nope, not yet. <laughs> no, no. It ain't ready. Yeah, you don't want to try to put out something just because you have a date on it. Yeah, I trip off of voice inflections. I'll do a voice inflection seven times or wow. more just until I get it right. Like, I don't like it. No. No, I don't like it. No. Again. Again. I'll one take some shit. Again. I don't care. Like, again. Be like the fourth to sixth to maybe tenth time. It'll be perfect. Damn. Know? So... I'm sorry. I, I, this is who I am. Like I, 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 I don't ever see myself putting out whack shit ever. Something that's whack to me. I have to enjoy some shit and be a fan of myself before I give it to somebody. Like it's like giving someone a trash gift. <laughs> it's like I don't know what to get you, even though I've known you for ten years. I'm gonna give you this gift card, bitch. <laughs> like, like you know, like. Hey, gift cards come in handy though. They come in handy, but I mean, like I be seeing people. It's foul if it's you know this person for over a decade. You know? <laughs> it's like, come on, man. Let's foul. That's how I feel. It's like getting weed at your shows and then someone bringing you pastries. I'd rather have pastries. You know my favorite donut. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can't be doing all the donuts, though. Nah, that ain't cool no more, man. I love donuts, still. I and still... bacon. Fuck. Fuck that. I'm, I'm going to keep eating bacon for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're working out every day. You can do it. Yeah, man. Yeah. But, man, so you got a couple projects you're working on. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to hear those because... I got a quick question for you. Go for it. Who is your favorite hip-hop influences and why did you... You told me earlier, but why did you start doing interviews? I like I like talking to people. I like learning about people. I like getting into the mind of people. I don't know. I, I like, psych, like psychology and shit like that. Oh, word. I like getting into, you know, how people think. And that's why I, I always ask, you know, what is the writing process like? What are you, you know, how... How did you, like, you broke your, your, your verse down and stuff. Like, I like that stuff. I hate writing sometimes. <laughs> well, hey. It's because I, it's, it's the worst shit ever. <laughs> it's tedious. So I imagine when you do your work and you care about what you do and shit, I'm pretty sure it's tedious. Yeah. You're a perfectionist. Yeah. I, I, I like doing the research. I like getting into there. And you have, I think, like, 1,200 pictures on your Instagram. <laughs> I have about at least 1,079. Yeah, you have a lot. <laughs> I like photos, man. Yeah, so I, I went through there. I like doing the research. I like going into the music. And I, I like doing, you know, that's the fun part. Yeah, it's the best feeling. And I appreciate that. I did some research on you. Huh. On your interviews. You've been doing this for a second, man. What made you What made you pick the Slump Session name? Um, it goes back to, man, kind of... Uh, Hold on one second. Oop. Hello? Oop. Yeah. Nah, I ain't got nothing today. Nah. Uh, I got two more people. Uh, yeah, probably. All right. He was asking if I had anything to drink. No, I didn't bring a bottle today. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, Clear. <laughs> <laughs> we're back. Uh, I like the the name, man. It it first, it's very Houston based. You know, just with the purple, the black. You know, it's very Houston based. So it's something that people could relate to in that aspect. But also, like, whenever I was back in high school and shit, it goes back to chilling. You're getting, you know, you're smoking with the friends and you, you're having just a good time listening to music and you're, you're having a slump session. That's hard. 
and having conversations. Yeah, and having having the music conversations, having the, you know, being in a good good vibe, good yeah. mindset. Positive energy is everything. That's what it goes back to, and also you know it was something that I was trying to work with some other people and fuck them. Hey man, shit happens. Yeah, no, definitely, but yeah, that's why that's it's that's snake, it. Snake, 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 snake. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Fuck, fuck snakes, we fuck <laughs> reptilians. <laughs> but that's it, man. That was that's why how, how I came about. Where where? What's your favorite interview you've done so far? Because I see you like a couple of them. Oh, I don't know. That's a that's a hard one because I've I've never really thought about my favorite. I would have, actually have to go through, and sometimes I forget who I've interviewed. Really? Yeah, but it it hasn't been that long. I've been doing it ten months. Ten months? It hasn't even been a year. Shit, I'm, I'm really having, good at this, man. I I have a year coming up uh, in June. No promises, but I want to try to put together a show for that. No promises. I want, I want to try to put together a anniversary for the year show. But, you know, hey, also, check out the mixtape whenever it drops. Oh, I, t- I hit you about that. Yeah. And we're going to have to talk about it. But, yes, Bet. we have we have the mixtape coming out. Slump, 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 music. slump Sessions. Slump Sessions. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be called yet. It says SM2 or some shit. No. It says SS2. Where on the Someone put a cover up. I was like, that's hard. What is it? Yeah, that was the that was gonna that's gonna be the cover art for it. But it's just it's just I think it's gonna be called Stay Slumped. That's gonna be the Say bro. Check that out. Yeah. Whenever it drops, I ain't no ain't no date yet on whenever it's gonna be coming out, but whenever it comes the fuck out. Check it out. Check it out and move. We don't no in betweens. Thank you. Slump session. <laughs> but yeah, so I got that coming out. But uh, man, why don't you let everybody know where they can find you at? Man, okay. Everyone can find me at on Instagram at something better. That's S U M T H I N G B E D D A R. That's something better. On Twitter, you can find me at Valasia. That's capital V I L L A Y S I A. My shirt say it. Um, uh, on SoundCloud, you can find me again at Valasia. That'll be V I L L A Y S I A. You can find me on Spotify, all your major streaming platforms, YouTube. Uh, YouTube is something better. All those is also something better. All my major streaming platforms for my music. Um, please follow the homies as well here, Slump Sessions. All of them, please. Also, follow the homies, Divine Ba. Please follow the homie Abstract Flanders. He just dropped this beat tape. Follow uh, Down South Stan. Follow I'm forgetting people. Follow the homies from Yatu who linked me up with this man right here. Yeah, shout out to Yatu. Shout uh, out to Poncho. Shout out to Langston. Langston Hunter man has yeah. been a real instrumental person, and Aloya Day has been a real instrumental person in my time here. Uh, Tino dropped the song. Please go check that out. It's called Purple. You know she's doing really really well. Um, Langston dropped Vexed So y'all need to go check that out If you want to just be ignorant one time <laughs> And then Pancho, Pancho dropped uh, Captain Pancho. Captain Pancho. And I also just dropped a visual called Yeehaw Shot by the man Roland That man is nice So yes Shout out to all of them Hey I appreciate you for coming by Hey man No sweat at all I, I fucking enjoyed this This is like one of the coolest things I ever did in my life <laughs> Thank you man This and is I, a good conversation Hell yeah I wish I had more I wish that we could talk more That shit sucks yeah, I mean, definitely, we could definitely have you come back for another one. Do I fill out the application again? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we're we're figuring out a different way to do this. Okay, we're, cool. we're figuring out a different way to get everybody to get more organized around here. But we definitely gonna have to have you come in for for another one. This was fucking cool. Hey, anytime, anytime. Facts. Once again, this episode is brought to you by oh, Fish Scale. Fish Scale eighty four. Head over to Fisco84.com and Reneka at Builders. One last time, links will be in the description below. If you want to d- donate to the Kiss a Pig Foundation, hey, donate. This will help your family in the future, man. It really will. Real shit. Diabetes is everywhere. It really is. It's wild. It's, it's hard out here for a person who loves sweets. Facts. 
<laughs> what? Hey, appreciate you for coming by. Stay slum. All day, man. Slump. All day. Y'all know what the fuck going on. Also, y'all know what the fuck going on. This ain't no motherfucking game. Y'all see this shit? Y'all see this shit? This is this is real. This is real. Subscribe. Yes. And click that notifications bell. Yes. Click the notifications bell. Like and subscribe. Once again, stay slumped. Gem star bars, I cut them above 50 overhead, so rejecting the words, I'm so witty. And a maniac on the track, I get silly. And a champagne Chevy, still peaking above 50. Stop pop squilly till labels is 10 milli. Agree to my terms, and now that they won't clip me. Women say I'm cool as a fan, thanks really. We fucking.